Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Let's see, I think I'll have to get a little closer to this. All right. Um, running a few minutes late, I'm having way too much fun this morning. I'm uh, having a few side conversations and whatnot. Um, oh my goodness, there's another Halloween mask. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so let's get started. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. My brothers and sisters, to bear ourselves for this celebration, let us call to mind our shortcomings. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Today is the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our 
first reading is from a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people saying, fear the Lord your God and keep throughout the days of your lives all his statutes and commandments which I enjoin on you and thus have long life. Hear then Israel and be careful to observe them that you may grow and prosper the more in keeping with the promise of the Lord, the God of your fathers, to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Take to heart these words which I enjoin on you today. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial, I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. I love you, Lord, my strength. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim, for I am safe from my enemies. I love you. Lord, my strength. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. Extolled be God, my Savior. You who gave great victories to your king and showed kindness to your anointed. I love you, Lord, my strength. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, the first is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord, our, the Lord God is God alone. You shall have the Lord your God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment than these. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, well said, teacher. You are right in saying he is one and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as you love yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. So there are a number of Gospels where the scribes and the Pharisees are questioning Christ. And some of them were actually told that the motivation of these questions was to trap Jesus, trap him in some inconsistency, trap him in advocating disobeying the Judaic law. I think we all remember uh, the, idea, the, uh, the, the one conversation about the coin that they, they asked Jesus, is it lawful to pay the tax to Caesar? And Christ says, show me the coin. And they show him a coin and, and it has Caesar's head on it. And the, the famous quotation that Christ then follows up with is, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar and to God the things that are God. And that was a, that was a that example was a thing for, for the Jews. And they were Jews, they, they, the Romans were oppressing them, and, and they were kind of looking for some reason, some argument as to why they should not pay the taxes. Christ said, render to Caesar. And there were other situations where I think there was one fairly recently in our Gospels uh, about divorce. You know, 
Moses said it was okay for a man to divorce his wife. Jesus, what do you say? And, and again, the motivation for these was maybe we can trip him up. Maybe we can show that he really doesn't know what he says he knows. Maybe we can look good for ourselves. Okay, those kinds of very negative uh, motivations. But this particular question, this particular question raised in today's gospel, when we read the details, this seems like a scribe. Now the scribes were very skilled in the law at the time of Christ. But it seems from the reading of this gospel that this scribe was legitimately asking a question. He wasn't trying to trick Jesus. He respected Jesus as a teacher, as someone knowledgeable in godly things. He was essentially asking him for advice. You know, what, what do you think? Now the background for this is at the time of Jesus, there were something in excess of 600 requirements that you were supposed to live your life by. Now we started back in the time of Moses. Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the, with the two stone tablets with the Ten Commandments on. And you say, okay, you know, I think most of us in the room, uh, when we went to grade school, uh, whether it was a Catholic grade school or you went to CCD classes or something, it didn't take long till you had them memorized. I mean, you could recite them, you know, there were only 10. Uh, and I think early in Judaic history, that was probably a similar case. Well, over the years, over the centuries, little things were added here, little things were added there. Um, those of, of, of us who are a little bit familiar with the Jewish tradition uh, know about keeping kosher. You know, your, your kitchen has to be done a certain way. And you say, well, if I go read the Ten Commandments, which are in the Old Testament Bible, that there's nothing in there about certain foods being not appropriate. It, it's thou shalt not kill, honor your mother and father, and so on. So where did this come from? Well, over the centuries, again, the rabbis studying this said, well, um, thou shalt not kill. Well, sort of a follow-on to that is you should help each other stay well. So these embellishments, these add-ons. And at the time of crisis, I said, there were an excess of 600 of these. And one of the debates was essentially between the uh, Pharisees and the Sadducees. Uh, there were two Jewish sects, if you will. They had somewhat different beliefs, uh, not dramatically different, but in detail. Um, and, and one of the groups felt that every one of the 600, Father Michael said last night, 613, but who's counting? 600, each one of those was just as important as any other one. God, imagine getting up in the morning. It was pretty easy to have the Ten Commandments in your head, but imagine getting up every morning and being worried about 613 things you had to do just right every day. And the, the other group said, well, no, there's really some kind of hierarchy. And that's where this question comes from, from this particular scribe. He's asking Christ, in a way, Jesus, you know, I'm told I'm supposed to follow 613 things. But aren't there one or two things that, that if I do those really well, I'm okay? Not that I should ignore the other things, but, you know, it could be something easy to focus on, easy to remember. And Christ goes back to a thing in the Jewish tradition which is called the Shema, S-H-E-M-A. And I guess I should go back to my, to my book here and, and, and quote it again. I'll have to 
to find him again. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, your our God, is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Um, this is something that uh, in the time of Christ, and I think some Jewish families still today, put it in a little tablet and put it on their doorpost. The Shema is said twice a day. You open your eyes in the morning and you say the Shema. Just before you go to sleep at night, you recite the Shema. You can see the power of that. When you wake up in the morning, I need to love the Lord my God with all my heart, all my strength, all my being. Um, some of the Jewish priests have things that they would wear on their heads or little things that would hang down on their forehead, phylacteries. And inside was a little text of the Shema. So this scribe is, you know, how do I do this in a more straightforward way? I, I, I want to be a good Jew. I want to do the right things, but 613, I can't even remember them all. Now, he didn't put that in the gospel, but that to me would be the implication. And Christ goes back to Deuteronomy. You'll notice that the first reading this morning had the Shema in it. Moses said, this goes all the way back to Moses. You should love the Lord your God with all your soul, all your heart, all your strength. He said, okay. But then Jesus adds a sentence. And you should love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's essentially Jesus' recipe for being good Catholics. You love God as hard as you can, as best you can. First thing in the morning, last thing at night. And you take care of your neighbor. You love your neighbor just as much as you love yourself. Is it? Wow. That's all, you know, now I only have to remember two things. Pretty easy. Okay? And if you go back and um, hopefully this is good theology, but if, if you go back and look at the Ten Commandments, well, the first commandment is a different wording, essentially, of the Shema. Kind of love your love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. Keep holy the Sabbath day. Well, that's loving God. Never take the Lord's name in vain. That's loving God. Then the other seven, I would argue, are about loving your neighbor. Two in particular are absolutely about loving your neighbor. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. You go, oh. So maybe loving my neighbor is, in some sense, a little bit above the Ten Commandments. You know, seven of those commandments seem to be about loving my neighbor. Well, Paul, what do you think about honoring your father and mother? That's number four. I said, well, I'd, I'd argue, you know, remember the gospel, who is my neighbor? Everyone in this room is your neighbor. Your mother and father your kids, brothers and sisters. Oh, but they're my family. Well, everybody is your neighbor. There may be some other specific details, but everybody's your neighbor. You think, okay, so honoring my father and mother is certainly consistent with loving my neighbor. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, shalt not commit adultery. All of these things are about treating your neighbor in a good way. In a good way. So 
So this scribe gets a pat on the back from Christ. The scribe responds to Jesus and said, Teacher, you've answered well. Now he doesn't mean that in a sort of a sarcastic way. He came in yearning for a much more simple, more direct way of following his faith. And Christ gave it to him in just a couple of sentences. And the scribe re goes and talks back to Jesus and said, well, in a few words, in my interpretation, thank you. That helped me a lot. I now can organize my life around these two ideas and if, and if I do it well, maybe I've got a chance of being a good person if I do it well. So we can imagine that we're in that same conversation. Jesus, what are the What's the one thing I need to do? What's the greatest commandment? You love God and love your neighbor. And there's an interesting little phrase in the gospel, and, the, and there are no commandments greater than these. So Jesus is actually avoiding the, oh, well, as long as you do these two, the other 611 are not important. He doesn't say that. <laughs> you ask me, what's the greatest? Jesus asserts the Shema and says, there's nothing else greater than these. So that allows maybe an equivalence. But I think what I hear Christ saying is, Love God, love your neighbor. All the rest of it is details. We place all our hope in the Lord as we now turn to the Father with our prayers. That the church will be fervent in proclaiming the gospel of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who hold public office will be guided by virtuous principles and what is truly good for the human person, let us pray to the Lord that our parish families will grow in holiness, especially through greater outreach to the poor and the needy, let us pray to the Lord. For the relief of those who are victims of war, human trafficking, drug running, and slave labor, let us pray to the Lord. For the repose of the souls of all the faithful departed, that they will soon rejoice with all the saints in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. For the grace this week to love our neighbors as we love ourselves, let us pray to the Lord. Most merciful Father, help us to still and quiet ourselves, confident in your unfailing mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Forsake me not, O Lord, my God. Be not far from me. Make haste and come to my help, O Lord, my strong salvation. Let us pray in confidence the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
The peace of the Lord be with you all. And let us now share the sign of Christ's peace with those around us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but I want to say the word that the soul shall be with. Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gifts for receiving what they promise. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless and protect us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kathy, did you have an announcement for us? I thought it would be of interest to this group. We have a guest priest coming this Thursday to offer an All Saints, All Souls Mass at 2 o'clock. So uh, Thursday afternoon, if you're interested in that, it will be a Catholic Mass for All Saints, All Souls. 